Good afternoon and welcome to World Talks with me, Salia Stremska. This time we're going to concentrate on Poland's domestic matters. The bill decriminalizing assisted abortion did not pass the vote in Poland's lower house of parliament. Changes introduced to the abortion law several years ago have sparked a wave of protests across the country as abortion continues to be a highly contentious issue. To discuss, I am joined by Magdalena Lempart, lawyer and activist, founder of the Polish Women's Strike. Good afternoon, delighted to have you with us. Thank you, but my name is Marta, actually. Uh, <laughs> sorry. My apologies, um, uh, sincere apologies, I I'm sorry. Uh, but, before we start, uh, but before we start discussing the issue, let's have a look at some of the graphics that will perhaps make it a little easier to understand. So the bill decriminalizing assisted abortion did not pass the vote as uh, 435 NPs voted, 215 in, in support of the bill and 218 against. Two MPs abstained and 23 were absent. So the bill was offered by the left, a part of the ruling civic coalition. The bill proposes changes to Article 152 of the Polish Penal Code by stipulating that anyone who with the woman's consent terminates her pregnancy is not committing an offense if no more than 12 weeks have passed since the pregnancy began. And that anyone who with the woman's consent terminates her pregnancy if prenatal tests or other medical grounds indicate a high probability of severe and irreversible impairment of the fetus or an incurable disease that threatens its life shall not be subject to punishment. Poland's abortion laws enforced since 1993 were changed after a constitutional tribunal ruling in October of 2020. Previously, the Act on Family Planning, known as the Abortion Compromise, allowed for abortions to be performed in the event of severe and irreversible impairment of the fetus, fetus or incurable disease that threatens its life. Now, abortion is allowed in only two cases, when the woman's life or health are in danger or when the pregnancy resulted from a criminal act. Changes to abortion law have sparked massive protests across the country already in 2020. Yeah. So you were at the forefront of these protests. Yes, and for us it's kind of the big step still because we started in 2016 when support for legal abortion was 37%. Now it's over 70% and support for decriminalization of abortion and it's a difference because it's just decriminalizing abortions that are out of the system. It's not putting additional abortions in the system. It's still the abortion is permitted in the system in the same way. It's just that people are not criminalized, partners, mothers, sisters, and so on. Um, so it's a huge step because same, actually, the lower chamber of the parliament voted on the bill uh, on abortion. And of course, it's very disappointing because it's over 90% of people in Poland who support the criminalization. It's 70 for legalization, so putting abortions as a service in the system, and over 90% um, for the criminalization. So just uh, not investigating, putting on the stand, going to court against partners and sisters and mothers and activists who help in abortions. Absolutely, but it seems to, I mean, it was a close call, right? 215 versus 218. Um, so do you think that uh, there will be another attempt to perhaps make this uh, bill pass? I think it's a question for the parliamentarians. It's a question to Donald Tusk, uh, because as you see, like my reflection today is that it's not Donald Tusk, who's the Prime Minister of Poland, it's Kosiniak Kamysz and Roman Giertych, who we know as an extreme right politician, actually, and belongs in Confederacja, not in Civic Platform or any party that basically believes in human rights. And it's a very disappointing because uh, the win for this coalition that is ruling now was brought by women and young people, the people who protest and people who totally support human rights, women's rights, legal abortion. And today it turned out that it's the this extreme right conservatives in the government that decide about human lives in Poland and about and go against all the electorates because over, as I said, over 90% of people want abortion in Poland to be decriminalized and they still went against them and it's really a surprise for me because I know Donald Tusk as this kind of powerful 
figure, so it shows that it, we're really in a bad state because if anybody in this coalition thinks that people will again go and vote after this, I think they are in, like, I, I, I don't know how they can even think that, that these young people and these women will go again and vote in three years because they won't. But I wanted to go back to what you said earlier. You said that you started the advocacy for, for, for yes. um, legalizing abortion, if I yes. may so, uh, say so, in 2016. So before these uh, more rigorous changes uh, to the law. Um, so what are you trying to achieve? A complete um, legalization of abortion? Yeah, we want, of course, we want legalization because legalization is also putting us as a medical service in the system. Now, the out of the system abortions, because terminating own pregnancy in Poland is legal, so we're in this more or less easy situation compared to other countries and abortion is banned and is criminalized also for a person's terminating their own pregnancies. So we are fighting for legalization of abortion because now it's 7.5 five million euros per year that people and NGOs pay to to have these services provided because Polish healthcare system doesn't provide that. And so that's the thing, that's the thing, that's putting abortion because it's a medical service in the system, in the healthcare system and providing that. Of course, decriminalization is also crucial because, but it would, it's of course, of course it's joint because the legalization of course goes further than decriminalization. Decriminalization leaves abortions out of the system, but decriminalizes people who are helping in abortions. So that, would, that was very important because it's people who have less money, people who are not in the networks, people who have the least resources who are in these courts. Not rich people, not parliamentarians, not elite, not establishment. It's the people who have the least resources to actually survive the court process when they are on investigation right. for helping in abortion. So that's also really cruel from parliamentarians comparing what resources they have. Right, I actually wanted to ask you about this uh, black market, if I may uh, call it so, um, of abortions that are being mm -hmm. performed. What do we know about that? What kind of... We know everything because, as I said, terminating own uh, pregnancy is legal. Informing about how to terminate pregnancy in Poland is legal. So all those uh, collectives, especially Abortion Without Borders is the biggest collective, that provide information how to access abortion are completely legal. So there's official website, Facebook page, Instagram, 22 29 22 597 is the number. It's the third most known number in Poland. There was actually research. First is the police, second is the fire brigade. The third number that everybody in Poland knows is the number to abortion over borders. And they provide 50,000 abortions per year, uh, which means it's one third of the total. And they do really, really thorough reports. Uh, for example, from their reports, we know that 96% of those abortions are pill abortions before the 12th week. Uh, that's why it's, it's the system. And it's the system that works. And this system should be put in the healthcare system because everybody thinks of abortion as this medical procedure with doctors and nurses. No, up to 12 week abortion is made by pills and it's actually a World Health Organization uh, to provide as, as possible um, that abortion should be mostly home abortions and with the pills because it's the safest. And do we, do we know more about the demographic? I mean, would we know that one, it's, there's one myth that it's always brought by the right-wing conservatives, people who are very religious, usually divorced, uh, as Kosinia Kamish, for example. And uh, the argument is that women have abortions because they are careless. 61% of women who have abortions already have children. They do it because they cannot handle the pregnancy, they cannot handle having more children, they cannot they don't, just don't want to be pregnant, or they are afraid for their lives, for ha their health, as we know what happens in Polish hospitals, and they don't want to risk leaving their family. Right. That's, that's it. Do you so that's, the inter that's interesting data uh, that, of course, they will, never, they, they will never allow to be public. Um, but do you think that the, this uh, sort of, um, it is a wider trend because Roe versus Wade was overturned uh, yes. in the US quite recently in 22, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. So do you think that the world is becoming more conservative and uh, perhaps uh, the rights of women are being limited? No, I think the, that this, this, I don't know, the scale is going more and more extreme. Um, because now we see the election results in France before in the, in, in the UK. So no, I think we're just jumping back and forth and it's exhausting.
And it's exhausting, obviously, because now we can, of course, I expect that Confederacja and Peace will win the next elections because this government, after today and after the LGBT rights that they will also fail at, I think, I'm sure, because they, they cannot control this, this uh, extreme conservatives. So we will have this in Poland, this extreme right with peace and power, and then we will go back, and I think it will be in many countries, and it's not good for any democracy, it's not good for the EU, it's not good for the world, that we have these political spectacles, and it's always jumping back and forth in this really far on the scale. So what is the plan moving forward? More, more campaigns to inform people, or perhaps... People are convinced. It's politicians who hate women, people who don't listen to their voters. Uh, so it's also that. We cannot inform politicians. They know what the, the research is, they know what the data is, they don't care what their voters want. That's it. What we can do, we can push for another bill on the criminalization uh, to be run through the parliament again. There are two legalizations, legalization bills uh, by Lewica and, and uh, Civic Platform uh, that will be a one bill, I guess, in the committee of Dorota Woboda's committee. And so we, I'm expecting these bills to be proceeded in spite of this thing, because many things can change. Um, and if it doesn't happen, if we don't have any bill that will be voted in uh, until presidential elections, we will not have, we will not be able to predict that something will be voted in until the presidential elections. Uh, we will organize a collection of signatures, uh, which gives us, of course, uh, more hand in this because we won't have to go for this compromise uh, with the conservatives. So I think it's a really big mistake on their part because our bill will be much more um, rooted in reality that they hate because they want to limit women and make barriers. So our bill will be based on abortion without borders, how they really do abortions, how abortions should be provided, not what people, what some politicians want or some churches want. And they will have to deal with the civic bill that will, be supposed, that will be supported by hundreds and thousands of people and we'll do it in the presidential campaign. So when we vote in the campaign, when we will be electing president, we will also be voting about electing president who will vote, who will not veto. And so on we this have the plan, note, we always have the plan. And so on we will this note we have to conclude. Thank you so yeah. much, Marta Lempert. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for watching World Talks. Please stay tuned for more here on TVP World.